My name is Kaz Riley and this is the Hypnosis 247 Live Network and trancing in, with, in the sheets with me this evening is none other than fellow Brit Grant Saunders. Grant is easily one of the most loved and certainly one of the most hardworking and busiest stage hypnotists in the UK. He's done um, shows in Balmoral Castle, um, uh, in England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. He teaches, he lectures, he speaks, and uh, lives here in Yorkshire as well. So what more could we want from a fellow Brit? So uh, uh, we'll speak to Grant in a moment about being the show. But before I do, um, just a quick word from our sponsors today. Um, as you join the network, you will have got a travel card or a travel voucher sent to you via email. Don't forget to activate that. And if you're interested in learning how travel vouchers and travel cards can enhance your business, enhance your referrals, you can use them even as hypnotists to help grow your business, then just put the word solutions in the box below and uh, we'll get some information sent out to you. So Grant, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> just down the road, but on Zoom, it's great, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, that's probably the comfort. I've, got, I've only got boxer shorts on underneath the shirt. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and they, they never know what I've got on from here. I they always keep telling me I should have a crown on being the, being the Brit on the network, but there we go. So tell me, Be The Show is your strap line. It's the one that we kind of know you for. What does it mean? It's about, it's about the performance element of hypnosis rather than just doing hypnosis. There's a lot of people that um, get so caught up in the words that they have to say rather than how they say them. And with stage hypnosis, you know, it, it, it is about the entertainment. It is about the delivery. It's about the performance. And this adds so much excitement to the show. This builds the expectation. This builds the... Uh, the nerves, the excitement within the audience and the volunteers. And because of that, you get a better response. You know, a, a, a badly worded suggestion delivered with conviction and, and all sorts of mystery around it has much more effect than a correctly worded one delivered in a weak kind of way. You know, and it's not just about, it's not just about big stages. You know, I have, I have all sorts of little backdrops so I can try and make even the smallest stage look like a stage or it looks like an event and even even the therapy room itself is a stage everything in there when the client walks in should be there to excite them and to uh, trigger their imagination and it puts put them in the right frame of mind for those suggestions well it's the suggestion itself isn't it of where they are you know and they come in here yes. the, the chair and the, the certificates and you know it's all it's all real stuff, you know, watches on the walls and stuff, but it, it's, it's, the, it's the power of suggestion. It's like when we talk about the hypnosis starting on the phone, I guess, isn't it, almost? Yeah. So, so in terms of be, be the show, what, what, what kind of things do you, would you kind of think would translate from stage hypnotism, say, over to clinical, you know, into the people like me in an office from a stage hypnotist like you? What, what can we take away from that kind of that ethos? A lot of people, when they come to the therapy room, have the preconception, rightly or wrongly, of what hypnosis is. And for a long time, it's been easy for a lot of hypnotherapists or the hypnotherapeutic community to kind of, yeah, but it's not like that. There's no barking like a dog or clucking like a chicken or, you know, that type of thing. However, if, if you bring some of the elements of stage, the, the delivery, the direct suggestion, um, all of that, it, it, it really does make, it, it, it puts the client where they want to be. They've come to see a, a, a hypnotist because of that conception that they have. You know, they've seen a show or seen something on YouTube or on television or some weird and wonderful thing that makes them go, well, do you know what? If that, if that can make that happen, then surely this, this thing must be able to do that. But then if they're confronted with somebody who goes, oh, no, none of that's, none of that's real. You'll just feel very relaxed. Um, it, it jars their expectation. And we work in imagination and expectation. So effectively, you're, you're pushing them back three steps and then trying to convince them it's something else. I, I think this is very true. I know when I, when I trained um, eons ago in, in hypnosis, I was taught almost to fear 
stage hypnosis you know I think I was even made to sign a document to say should I engage in any stage like activities that I don't know the world would go up in flames or something really bad would happen but I also know you know I you know I kind of got past that very quickly um, by going to see stage shows because I wanted to learn as much as I could about hypnosis and I always say to my students if you want to go and learn how to do amazing hypnosis and to be a good hypnotherapist you have to be a good hypnotist is to go and do some stage training go and watch some stage shows um go and learn and also i know how many referrals i've had from you know your shows and other stage hypnotist shows where you know people have done that and they've gone wow if you can make if you can make somebody you know i was i always remember when you made my husband think his, his shoe was a phone Mm -hmm. and uh you know stuff like that if you can make people do that then you can sort out my anxiety so i think there's work it's that working together isn't it to create one big hypnosis show where we all have different elements and that for me that's that's the important thing as a stage hypnotist there is a uh, a responsibility uh, to be a good advocate for hypnosis in general and i always try and make the show even though i can do a, a show to an adult audience i always try and keep it age appropriate but i always try and keep it fairly positive as well like the suggestions are done to be silly and to get a reaction and to be entertaining foremost however i always like to put things in there that are going to make people question i want them to have a takeaway the one i do at the moment that i like the most is you know you make someone forget their name you know and then you you know again as a stage hypnotist it's it's easy easy for us to turn up with a microphone and just do the show we don't need any props, we don't need light, we don't need sound, we don't need any of that. However, the more that you add into it, the more of a show the person gets. So you give them the suggestion that they can't remember the name. You could just go, watch your name and leave it at that. However, I like to add in some Jeopardy music, we turn it into a game show, we really build it up. And eventually we get to the point where we ask them a series of questions, each one gets more valuable than the one before it. And the final question, for one million dollars, what is your name? And they just can't find it. And this is a great way of saying to the audience, like, listen, who here thinks money motivates people? If money really motivated people, then surely this person would be able to save their name, something they've had since the day they were born for a million dollars. And it always gets a good reaction. And I like to think that suggestions like that, skits like that, make people go, oh yeah, you know, if it can do that, then surely it can help me you know, anxiety, confidence. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've certainly noticed there's been a shift with stage hypnotism where it has, um, especially with people like you, where, you know, in the past with other people, it would be, it would be a quite humiliating experience for some people that were up on stage. And now actually it's often a very positive one. It's very, it, you know, they, they're coming away with something that they've been left with feelings of feeling good or, you know, of, you know, feeling that they can do something or achieve something or, or like that, you say, you know, you, and or, the, or the audience gets some kind of take home message that is a really positive one. I know when I've ever seen your show, you've always left the audience with um, lots of feelings of positivity. That's something that you build into the end of your show, isn't it? Audiences have evolved. Stage hypnosis, you know, you've got to think of it, you know, it, you know 20 years ago, 25 years ago, Bernard Manning was doing the clubs and he was, a, a, you know, of that time was a hilarious comedian. Stage hypnosis kind of stayed there. There was people that weren't natural entertainers, but to get a reaction from the audience would be shocking. And, and this is, is kind of what gave it a bad name for a long time. And in the UK especially, we really suffered. You know, at one point there was, there was no stage hypnosis gigs anymore in this country. It pretty much died up. But then as audiences have evolved, people don't necessarily want to see something that's shocking. Now, don't get me wrong, there was guys out there that that's their USP and that's all props to them. That's their market. That's fine. But audiences now, I found that, you know, they're more fascinated in the induction process. Mm. You know, the induction done right is a very entertaining part of the show. And people are interested in the psychology of it. And I think a lot of that comes from the back of the, the, the Darren Brown shows. People are really interested in what makes them tick now. So you can give them something that's silly, but you can give them something that's fun and educational as well. Well, I, I agree, because I think as well that stage hypnosis plays its part as well in, in kind of um, 
you know, normalizing things like mental health because we, it shows a fun side of the mind, doesn't it? And it shows how creative the mind can be. So actually, I think, you know, if we start to look as hypnosis as a whole thing rather than, you know, stage hypnosis, clinical hypnosis, recreational hypnosis, um, in whatever it may be, <laughs> yeah. let's look at hypnosis and yeah. then we all start to lift each other. I think that's actually the potential for that. It's a really powerful thing, isn't it? You know, and, you know, and we all play its part. I still hear, you know, people, oh, you know, all the terrible things that stage hypnotists do. But actually, you know, they're often, you know, you guys are often the, the first kind of gateway to somebody to even realizing the potential of their mind. And, oh. and also how fun hypnosis can be. I mean, God, God forbid somebody come into my office and, and laugh or have a great time. I mean, that's... Uh, but yeah. that's often the way, isn't it, you know? I mean, it's amazing now that, you know, I see lots of audiences, younger audiences, that have, have never heard of hypnosis. Not just stage, not just, they've never heard of hypnosis. And it's, it, for me, as a, there was a few years where I was almost like the, not anti-hypnotherapy, but it was kind of like, you see people at shows and they're kind of going, oh, that's the thing that, that's the thing that quits your smoking, but my mate tried that and it didn't work and they still smoke, so it's not real. And it's like, well, no, you know, if you spend... 30 minutes listening, listening to whale mating music, you know, and it's not, that's very different to what we're going to do on stage here. You know, if I had 30 minutes to do that to on stage, then it's, it's, you know, everyone would be asleep. But yeah, there's audience now that just, they just don't know what it is. No. Uh, it's nice to, it's nice to be the one that opens those curtains for them really, to kind of go, this is what, you know, this is a whole new world. By taking control of your mind, you can, you can control anything. That's it. And it's, and then that's essentially how those people become the show, I guess, isn't it? You know, they, you know, it's, it's, the, there's a stage, I guess, that, that you, they're on your off stage, but then they kind of maybe realize on their own stage within their life that, you know, there's very many different opportunities and scenes to be played out that they've never, never even considered prior to, you know, coming on a hypnosis show. So, and that, I mean, that's one of the main takeaways I give them at the end of the show. And it is that, you know, if you've been going through your life, especially some of the absolute stars on stage, you think these people are so good at this hypnosis. Why are they not using this for self-hypnosis? Why are they not developing themselves? And you kind of give that to them and kind of go, listen, you've got this gift now. Use it to your benefit. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. And also, and, and I imagine lots of them actually want to go and learn more because it is... I mean, we're fascinated by hypnosis still, aren't we? You know, we, we're both 20 years into our careers now, aren't we? You know, we're both still mesmerised, for want of a better word. I know we've had this conversation many times. It's something that we're both, I think it's, it's just something that runs in your blood, isn't it? The, the kind of the hypnosis, um, the hypnosis, you've, you've I don't got, know what you call it. Yeah, you've got, you've got to love it. Yeah. You know, you don't, don't get me wrong, there is some times when I've got to travel you know, a ridiculous miles to a show or travel to wherever for a show. And you kind of think, oh, it feels like work today. But then you have to pinch yourself and kind of go, actually, there's lots of people that would love to be in this position. And then you get there and what you think is going to be a bad show and all the signs of everything that you taught from the beginning is all these things are going to make it a terrible show. And even now, I still let that play on my mind. The moment before I go on stage, I'm a completely different person. The moment those lights come up and I come out, you know, that's when I become the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you are by far Britain's um, in, in busiest hypnotist. You are one of the most hardworking hypnotists that I've come across. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you're in high demand and you've got some great stories to tell, but I have an absolute favorite that I would love you to share, mm. um, which is the story about when you did a show at Balmoral Castle, because I it is just such a lovely quirky story. And we have a big American audience um, on this network. So it would be, I'm sure they, they love to hear about Balmoral Castle and all those kinds of things. So tell us what happened when you arrived at Balmoral Castle. It was bizarre because throughout the whole process, part of you is, is thinking this, this is, this is a joke, you know, and it's, it was pulling up to the gates and they've got all the, the police there as well. And still you kind of like, I'm a bit, I'm a bit unsure here. So pulled up, spoke to the, the policeman at the side and kind of, oh, I'm, I'm Grant Saunders and he's kind of gone down the list and couldn't see anything. I've gone, oh, I'm, I'm the, the hypnotist that's here. And he's then radioed through, uh, oh, Grant Saunders, the Queen's hypnotist is here. 
which I've made a joke about then. If you could say that again, please, whilst I record this on my phone, um, of which um, they don't really have the best sense of humour in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, a, a, a black BMW police car has come down, um, been told to follow the car, do not stray from the path at any point. And as, as we're following this car through the grounds, every turn in the road, where there's like a tree or something, there was an armed police officer. It was, it was the coolest experience ever. Gets, gets to the show, sets up, and I never eat before a show. Um, it's, it's something I've always had that way, um, and I just never do. Anyway, um, my wife's kind of come to me and they've offered us food, and I've gone, oh, oh no, thank you. And she's kind of turned to me and went, I think, I think the Queen Chef is, is good enough for you, do you not think? I'm like, well, yeah, but I don't eat before a show. Anyway, does the show, uh, everything's gone fine. Um, but being the performer, I'm now thinking of tomorrow's show because we're up in, like, up in the north of Scotland. Uh, I've got to be in Sheffield the following afternoon. And in my mind, I'm figuring this out that, you know, it's a nine hour drive. It's coming up to the time where I need to be kind of setting off now to get to the next job, really. So I've kind of rushed everything through, run out to the car, thrown my speakers into the back of the car, ran back in. As I ran back out, there was armed police everywhere and they are screaming at me um, to get on the floor. Um, and yeah, that was a, it was like a whole, maybe 30 minutes of an incident <laughs> um, where you're trying to actually explain that why somebody is, you know, at Barrowmore Castle, speeding the car around into the grounds with the full beam on and running in with these, these strange packages. And I'm like, yeah, but... So, yeah. yeah. And, and obviously, if you're going to have an excuse, well, I'm, I'm the Queen's hypnotist, the Queen's perhaps. Uh... You've got a purple crown for that. <laughs> there we go. I'll, I'll be the Queen of Hypnosis, and you can be you can be the King of Hypnosis. Yeah. People say I'm a Queen hypnotist. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, where where can people find you? Because I know your your shows are great. I know you you are doing a bit of travelling and speaking in the states as well. So, if people want to find out more about you and what you do, where where would they look? Um, I mean, find me on, on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, all the social medias. Uh, if you use hashtag be the show, uh, you'll generally find me on my stuff. Um, obviously, go to my website, www.grantsaunders.co.uk. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to blog more on there now, but that's just that's a nightmare blogging at the moment. Uh, you spend your time on your world getting loads of good pictures and videos, and it's trying to convert them into a blog. So, yeah time isn't it you know when we're busy when we are truly busy hypnotists time for a lot of that stuff just isn't there it's yeah. uh and, you know. And i know i should be more vocal on on social media on some stuff but this one all seems i don't know well that's maybe because you're you're actually doing this stuff do you know what i mean I <laughs> actually doing it you know when we're <laughs> yeah. doing it we don't always have time to be um talking yeah. about doing it if that makes yeah. sense yeah but uh, yeah, so, you know, please do go and have um, a look at Grant's stuff. He is, um, his stage shows are absolutely amazing. That You know, I've been lucky enough to um, watch them several times. Um, and um, is there anything else that you kind of just like, like a final word? I know, you know, we Brits like a final word. So I'll leave the final word to Grant today. I'll put me on the spot. Um, yeah, <laughs> just, if, you know, if, if you're going to be out there doing it, do it. If you're going to do it, do it as best as you can. Do it with bells and whistles and just be the show. Just really make it polished and deliver it with, with some finesse. Perfect. And I think that goes for um, whether you're working clinically or, or on stage, really. It's just giving, doing the best that you can. Yeah. Especially if you're doing it clinically. So, uh, well, thanks very much for um, tuning in and watching this episode of Trancing in the Sheets. I'll be back soon. I've got some really amazing guests lined up for you and uh, take care. See you soon.